through and cleaning up all the gunk along here. I want to have a very clean mating surface all the way around. So I'm just using this scotch pad. Okay, very, it's not too abrasive. Okay, going through on that, I have a little bit of uh, brake parts cleaner that I'm spraying on here to clean it up as well. And then a microfiber towel to find this, to uh, clean it all off when I'm done. So we'll get this nice and clean. Also, you can use your fingernail or a credit card to get a lot of the uh, old RTV off if it's pretty thick. Okay, so there it is all cleaned up with that uh, scotch pad and then the microfiber. You want to make sure it's completely dry and uh, as clean as you can get it. Now I made another video about the hardware and kind of a small problem that comes up with it. So I'll put the link to that in the description if you want to see. But basically what it comes down to is the factory uh, hardware that they give you with the kit uh, doesn't quite go down as deep as I'd like it to. So uh, there's some controversy on that, whether you want to get some longer bolts. And uh, so anyway, I'll put the video to that in the description, show you where to get the bolts. And I'll put the link to the bolts in the description as well. Okay, so we have our mating surface perfectly clean here, and we have our new cover, which is clean, but if you're using your old one, make sure that it's also perfectly clean. Now, uh, for sealing this, there's a few different things you can do. You can buy a lube locker pre-made gasket, and I'll put the link to that in the description, and those have been known to have good luck. But uh, anyway, what we're going to do is use some RTV sealant from Permatex, and you have two options here. You have the Ultra Black, which is great for stopping oil. I really liked it. I used it on my uh, Mach 1 on the solid rear diff. However, um, what a lot of people are turning to is the Ultra Gray. And the reason why is because this is going to help you with some vibrations. And uh, where a solid rear axle cover is on a solid rear and it's moving with the whole axle, everything's good. With a cover like this where it's actually bolted to the subframe you get a lot more vibration from it so um, ultra gray is kind of what has been recommended for this so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to cover uh, both ends here both on this side and that side just to make sure I have a really good seal on it and uh, we'll go ahead and torque it down. Okay so here's what I came up with laying a bead all the way across okay going pretty much underneath it and uh, then the same thing on the cover here which had an outline I followed the outline perfectly on that one so between the two it should be perfectly fine so we're just going to lift the cover now and I'm going to put it straight down on there and then we're going to put all the bolts in we're going to tighten them down 25 foot pounds wait 10 minutes come back and do that again now really important when you're putting this cover on you want to back these out all the way so that that plunger is not touching anything. It should be loose uh, when you go to put it on. So make sure you unscrew these all the way uh, so that uh, nothing's touching when you put the cover on. Okay, so you just want to look down, kind of line up the bolts, and then just drop it straight down on very carefully. Okay, because we're not trying to, you don't want to set it down and move it a lot, if you can help it. Something you also might want to do is get some Q-tips. If you've noticed that the uh, gasket maker is going down into the holes, you can kind of just clean them out a little bit so that you don't have any complications. Is, uh, it does happen when it smashes that gasket and we don't really want the gasket going down into the threads okay we're also going to put just a little strip of Loctite on here blue uh, should work just fine so just put a line down the thread and then screw it in okay now we're running all of our bolts in And I'll save you the time on this, but basically we're going to run them all in hand tight and you're doing the star pattern. Just going, you know, from one end to the other 
up and over. So I'll go ahead and thread all these. Okay, so now we're just going along hand tight first. So just make sure you're not going over 25 foot pounds and just going completely opposite uh, sides here. You want to have pretty much the same, you know, force all the way around. So don't go too much tighter on one than the other. Just kind of do it by feel. You want it to be pretty, pretty fairly distributed. That's pretty good and you're starting to see a nice little bit of uh, bead strip coming around the whole thing so we know that it's sealing properly. We're going to move to our torque wrench. Okay, the torque wrench, we're doing the same pattern. Okay, crisscross all the way through. Okay, everything's torqued down for the first round. You can see the uh, RTV coming out and that's fine. Maybe I was a little thick, but I'd rather do that than be too thin. It'll be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, wait a few minutes now and then torque it down again. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes. I'm going to go through and re-torque these again. Just make sure that we're good. We're the same pattern. Okay, sorry for this, it kind of exploded, but uh, the instructions now call to get some pipe thread sealant and go through and remove all the drain plugs and then uh, put some sealant on them and put them back in at 25 foot-pounds. Okay, so we started with the side one here and obviously we're not going to do the fill and fill level one because we're going to be removing those to fill the fluid. Um, but uh, we're going to go ahead, this is a five... 16th, so it has that thread locker on it. The pipe uh, sealant. Okay. And uh, we'll torque it in a second. Same size over here for the uh, drain plug. Yeah. You can use a Teflon tape on this, I could suppose, if you wanted to. And we'll do the Teflon on those two last, but those ones are in. Now we just need to torque them also to 25 foot-pounds. There we go. Okay, and that pipe sealant's kind of messy, so if you want, let me go ahead and clean up the excess around it. Okay, so next what we did is we screwed these in by hand, and they're only going to 60 inch pounds, or 5 foot pounds. So we set this right here. So here's our 50. 60s where we set that to. So we have our inch pound measuring torque wrench here and we're just turning it right to that 60 inch pounds. You want to be really careful with this because if they go too tight it will damage the bearings in the carrier. Okay so five foot pounds okay or 60 inch pounds is what we're going to. Okay, and we're using a 22 millimeter is the size for the uh, jam nuts. And it's that uh, 25 foot pounds. We have to hold this still. It's kind of the, there we go. Okay. 
course, we wanted to make sure that our fill plugs were loose and could come out before this so that we didn't have a sealed differential with no way to fill it. Now, those came out, I'm just gonna set them back in here so no dirt or dust or anything gets down in there. But um, I'm actually gonna let this cure uh, before we add any fluid. The recommendation for this stuff, if you look at it, is 24 hours to fully cure. So we're gonna go ahead and let it do its full cure before we add fluid. Okay, so the differential has now cured for a full 24 hours on the RTV. You can see it came out the seams a little bit here, which is fine. That's how it was on the solid rear axle too. We know we have a good seal. And what I'm gonna do, just for preference, I'm gonna take a razor blade and go through here and just clean it up. Now make sure you're not pulling it out because if you pull on it, you could compromise the seal. But if we're just coming through here very carefully, we're just gonna kinda shave off uh, the excess just to make it look a little nicer. Just gonna go around the cover that way. So you'll notice I'm cutting straight down on this part so it's not going into the cover at all. That's allowing this extra to, to peel off. It's just for looks. Okay, so a question I get is, can you fill the differential and then put it on the car? And the answer is yes, we took it off with it full and it was fine. Uh, you just don't want it to spill out any of the sides. So as long as you can keep it level as you're putting it in and removing it, then that's fine. The fill level is gonna go to here, so it's gonna be kind of close. Um, but as long as you keep it level, you can. So we're gonna fill the majority of it. Then when we put it on the car, we're gonna remove the plug again and test it just to see if any more comes out or whatnot. But we want it to be level. And here, it's pretty level. It's not perfectly level, but that's fine. And so what we're gonna do is start adding in our fluid. So we're using the 75W140 for the Cobra differential. Okay, so we pulled off the little tab here. And on this, I cut it more towards the top because we still wanna have a good angle as we're filling this in and I do have a pump system and a tube and all that that you could also use but just uh, this is pretty simple to do it this way so we can get the bottle all the way in and we're just going to start uh, squeezing it. If you're really impatient you can poke a hole in the bottom of the bottle so that it'll drain better but then you have kind of a mess so at this point we're just kind of squeezing it in letting it fill up. Okay, so now that this is about halfway uh, drained, we're going to take our friction modifier and just pour it in here. Then uh, reverse the cap and just kind of keep filling it. That'll be an easy, clean way of filling this up. Okay, put the lid back on and just keep filling. Okay, moving on to bottle two. We're gonna go ahead and remove our fill level plug. So we're just waiting for it to come out of here. So we're gonna to continue to fill it here in our top plug. And just remember, it's supposed to come out down here, not up here. Okay, so two bottles in almost exactly, it's coming out of the fill plug. So we know that we're pretty much there. And this is still pointing slightly downward a little bit, so uh, we know that we're definitely full. And what we'll do at this point is pretty much uh, plug this off. And then um, when we put it on the car, we might remove the plug again to let it level out when we know it's level on the car. But uh, we're close enough now. Okay, so from here, I reinstalled the fill level plug. I didn't put Teflon or pipe sealant or anything on it yet because I'm gonna do a final check when it's on the car. But this is reinstalled, and the same with the top fill plug. It's uh, it's there, it's, it's in, but at this point, until I go to lift it onto the car and I'm satisfied, I'm not sealing it, I'm just putting it back into place. So what I'm gonna do now is let this 
sit for overnight. Since I have time to do that, I'm not gonna install it now. And this is gonna be kind of like a, a leak test. And I'm gonna check it all out tomorrow and make sure that nothing's coming out from the seal at all because now it is full of fluid and it's gonna sit here for 24 hours. And granted, it's a little different when the car's actually running and uh, it's spraying you know, fluid all over the place on the inside. That's where you might start to see some of the leaks towards the top. But right now I'm just concerned on making sure that there's no leaks along the bottom part of it where the fluid is actually up against the cover. So we're gonna go ahead and stop the video here. We're gonna assume that everything's good and um, the next video I'll be putting this back onto the car.